last time we were reading very very exciting story uh ah, yeah thank you <clears throat> uh page 274 274 so the writer of his book is now writing about his guru <laughs> <laughs> I think you were not here Nepal. or something. Ah, Nepal. Nepal. Nepal, Nepal, yeah. So, uh, now it's uh, a description of, so it's about Sri Goranga Das Babaji. And um, his name was birth by birth Dhirendra. Dhirendra. Means the birth from the Dhira. From the peaceful, yeah. sober. <laughs> the king of sober. Um, and now his description from his college. So he went to. Scottish Church College. Scottish Church College? Mm -hmm. This was his college. This is Bhagavad also went. Maybe something like that. It was uh, near Calcutta. Prabhupada went to this Scottish, Scottish College. Yes, oh. I went once. Ah, you visited this place. Yeah. Oh my God. It was Bhagavad, I think, Centennial. Ah, there. And uh, at that time, uh, we visit uh, with a few devotees. With oh, take, take, take mic, John. Huh? Take mic. Yeah. Mm. This is Scotty Church. Scottish Church College. This college, I think Prabhupada was graduate, uh, graduate or Prabhupada went to this college. Mm. And uh, pra Prabhupada's centennial, I think, 90. 90, maybe seven. Mm. There is some opportunity to celebrate Pavupada's uh, centennial. 100 years. 100 years. Oh. And then at that time, I had the opportunity to visit his uh, college oh with Bhakti Charu Swami oh. and other devotees. Oh. And uh, Subhash Chandra Ghosh also. Chandra Ghosh. Mm -hmm. He's like kind of, you know, when World War II, at that time he was one of kind of leader of army. He, he also visited, oh, he was in this school. He's in this school, be, uh, very famous person. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, many uh, this college students also celebrate with Pavupa, you know, Pavupa in this college. I, this is my guess. This maybe. This, this. See, this in German. See. Right. Okay. Rather, rather, we're back. So, um, he had. It's described that he had amazed, he was brilliant and had wonderful memory. Uh, he could remember and reproduce, reproduce exactly whatever he heard only once. Mm. He was a good football player. Wow. <laughs> it's written. Direndra. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Direndra is Goranga Das Babaji. Yeah, yeah. Now, he was also. A uh, good wrestler. Yeah. Once one Japanese wrestler uh, visited and was uh, doing demonstration of his uh, skill, mm -hmm. and then Direndra de defeated even him is in wrestling. Yeah. 
Let's say we've read this already. Yeah. So, and also it is said his religious learnings. Ah, uh, his religion, religious, religious leanings, meaning direction. were also noted by his parents. Mm. And they presumed, they apprehended already that he might run away from home. Presumed and from, they yeah, presumed, they thought maybe oh, oh. it's possible. Like Vishw after Vishwambara about him, I thought so. Uh, he might run away from home and become a sadhu. So they tried to marry him, of course, <laughs> as early as possible. <laughs> One day, Indian problems. Translators. This is okay, speed, everything fine? Yeah, okay, Ananda Prema Rade, thank you. Okay, okay, I see them, I see them, I see them. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> One day, uh, when Direndra was sitting in drawing room in his house, One gentleman came in, and Direndra could guess from his dress and his behavior that this is a rich man, and uh, he knew that he never saw him before. It was the first time that he knew him. So this gentleman inquired, is Bupendra Babu in? Yes, replied Direndra. Then this gentleman was looking very closely and affectionately at Direndra and said, aren't you Bupendra Babu's son Direndra? Direndra sensed that maybe he, could, he had come with a matrimonial proposal <laughs> yeah, to marry him. <laughs> and then he became concerned, like Direndra became concerned. He said, no, 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 no. no I'm not Direndra. What have you do? Uh, uh, what, what have you to do with Direndra? Uh -huh. What do you need Direndra for? And the gentleman said, I have, came, I have come with a marriage proposal uh -huh. <laughs> for my daughter so, with Direndra. So clever. <laughs> but there is no Direndra anymore. He's dead. Direndra replied, Dead? <laughs> what happened to him? him? Bupendra Babu wrote to me only the other day asking me to come and see him. Uh -huh. <laughs> he died of cholera yesterday. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh what a tragedy! Mm, I would like to meet Bupendra Babu. He also died. Uh, you know, he is not in the mood to meet anyone. He is so absent. Uh, yeah, absent from sorrow and pain. So, gentlemen, returned sad to his home and disappointed. But Direndra was alarmed. 
<laughs> he thought that the plan was under <laughs> that there was a plan under going under like going on uh, to tie him with Maya. Mm. He was determined to renounce the world and take shelter under the lotus feet of Sri Guru Dev before the plan came true about his marriage. The same night, he sneaked away from home. <laughs> My God. And the next morning, surrendered himself completely at the feet of his Gurudev. Gurudev sent him to Samajbani. Samajbani. Samajbani in Navadvip to do bhajan under the guidance of Lalita Dasi. Mm -hmm. Who was another Siddha disciple of Sri Radha, Radha Raman Charandas Babaji. Bupendra Babu, his father, mm -hmm. in the meantime, already sent his men all around to search, to find Virendra. And as soon as he came to know that Virendra was in Samajbani, in Navadvip, he came there with Hajari Babu, a police inspector. Oh my God, deprogramming. <laughs> deprogramming in progress. <laughs> and co two constables, my God, to bring him home with their help if necessary. <laughs> wow. First, he left the police outside and went in to see Direndra alone. He tried to pursue Direndra in all possible ways to return home when all his attempts failed. He turned back to call the police. But he had hardly gone a few steps when he returned looking all around in bewilderment and saying, Oh, where, where have you gone so soon as you came? Will I not have your darshan again? Lalita Dasi was watching him all along. And she again asked, Babu, whom are you looking for? That tall Babaji I'm looking for that tall Babaji with light radiating from his face. He was bewildered. When his father turned and do a few steps, and then Lalita Dasi said to him, Who are you looking for? Uh, his father. Of yeah, he was he this. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for? yeah, who are you looking for? Because he forgot. He forgot. Uh, I'm looking for that tall Babaji with light radiating from his face. He followed me and tapped me on the back. When I turned around, he embraced me. And 
His voice choked with emotion. And he was like, <gasps> and he said, and I shivered, pa and a shiver passed through my spine. He looked at me tenderly with tears in his eyes and said to me, Bupen, how long would you continue under the illusion that things which do not really belong to you are yours and therefore suffer untold misery when they are uh, removed from you? You do not know that Direndra is mine. Then Bupendra uh, continued, Oh, his, his magic touch. It seems to completely have disillusioned me. Where? Where is he? I feel so distressed without being able to see him again. Then Lalita Dasi said, Come, I shall take you to him. She took Babu to the life size statue of Sri Radharaman Charandas Dev in Samajbani and said, See, isn't he the same Babaji? Yes, yes, it's him said Bupendra Babu. He fell at Babaji's feet and just mumbled, mumbled God knows what, while tears flowed incessantly from his eyes. He was now a changed man. His illusion had gone. He had realized that his claim against Direndra was false. Direndra belonged to his guru and guru's guru. And the path he had chosen was the only right path for the discriminating person whose eyes are opened. So, this is session everybody understands. Hmm. I also. So this is uh, Sri Radha, Radha Raman Charandas Baba is a very, very famous Baba at that time. Oh. At that time, very famous. Which town? Huh? No, the... Which period? Uh, about uh, 90... 90... 90 1900 or maybe 1900 or maybe 1900 you know 20 30 at that time mm. maybe you know 18 18 80 90 or 90 you know 20 30 you know you know something like that so 18th century, you know, 20th yes 19th century. 19th century to 20th centuries kind of you know from 
uh, from uh, like last part of 19th century to from beginning of 20, 20th century. So this Baba, this, this Siddha Mahatma is, is disi Siddha disciple Rarita Dasi. So, and uh, this uh, D Pendra, no, D Rendra, D Rendra become Rarita Dasi's disciple, means this Radha Raman Charan Das Baba is Paramagurudev. Mm -hmm. So father looking for his son, at that time Paramagurudev appear mm -hmm. in his vision. Mm -hmm. And then he touched and he opened father's eyes. Mm -hmm. And this is very interesting, this, this, this word, I was impressed. Mm. He said, Direndra belong to his guru and guru's guru. The path had chosen was the only right path for discriminating person whose I had open. So this is we understanding. Actually, disciple belong to not only Guru, but also Paramagurudev. And in this case, Paramagurudev to, to, and Paramagurudev help his grand disciple. It's like in ordinary uh, family, we belong not only to alphas, but grandfather and the light lineage. Yes. In way. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, like uh, sometimes, like uh, say, father, mother, sometimes difficult to help son. At that time, grandfather or grandmother came, mm. you know, and then sometimes grandmother, grandfather help his grand, you know, children, like uh, Sadhu Maharaj. Mm. You know, grandfather, grandmother, helping Sadhu Maharaj. So similarly, in this case, it's not a family, family one, but this is spiritual lineage. This Paramaguru that appear to help this Dhirendra. And this is, you know, interesting. Dhirendra belongs to his guru and guru's guru. And this is very, very, very touching. <laughs> Chiru Bhattan Sai Prabhupada told his disciple, mm. but uh, for the grandfather, his grandchildren's more dear. Ah! Grandfather means to him. Ah! <laughs> Rade! Rade! It's a big calling. Rade, Rade! Could you, could you could you could you repeat the, this wonderful line close to the end where he says, "Why are you suffering for the thing that does not belong to you?" Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Bupen, how long? <laughs> Would you continue under illusion that things which do not really belong to you are yours? Mm. And therefore suffer untold misery when they are removed from you. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's it's mm. The most beautiful contradiction you can think. The things that we <laughs> suffer for are the things that don't even belong to us. And the things that belong to us, the thing that belongs to us, namely our soul, can never be taken away. Mm. Mm. We only suffer when we attach to things that don't really belong to us and will uh, go away anyway, will disappear will perish. Just amazing paradox of human life. 
राधे ओके ओके वी विल कंटिन्यू रीडिंग सो भूपेंद्र बाबू दीरेंद्र फादर रिटर्न होम पीसफुली leaving direndra under the care of his gurus <laughs> after some time direndra went to vrindavan with the permission of his guru and uh, begin began to do bhajan under the guidance of sida shri jagadish das baba ji of kalyadaha kalyadaha is uh, as a karya as a karya for that and and that's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. on your own okay mm, okay so we know Uh, as his so jagannath das baba ji was his shiksha guru no jagadish jagadish das baba ji uh, his shiksha guru jagadish das baba ji affectionately called him gopal jagadish das baba ji became siddha by practicing ashtakalya lila smarana oh he's asking to explain what this ashtakalya lila smarana maybe rada charanti yeah you tell yeah doing ashtakalya smarana theory theory is fine that's just fine <laughs> Radha Krishna Prabhu ask what does it mean ashta kali lila smarana the day of radha krishna divided on eight paths ashta means eight paths Part. kali means time all time of day divided on eight paths each path has nature and which particular lila is happening hmm. like night time lilas when they run away from their house or middle day past times on radha kunda on the bank of radha kunda or bank of surya kunda mm. or morning time st- past times mm. seven o'clock then shimatradik came into the yashoda's house f- to cook for krishna to meditate on these lilas is mm. the main sadhana for raganuga sadaka mm. practitioner aspiring practitioner to they participating how they take part in this lila Mm. It's called Ashtakale Lila Smarana. Mm. Radhe. Radhe. Thanks. <clears throat> Because of Ateba Ui sings, this thinking or meditation become true. So if we think material things, then we may attain material object. But if we think Radha Mohan Dira, then our mind and thought become spiritual. Also, we may enter in that Dira. So, actually, honestly speaking, we are leading Bira Paksmanjari. That is also a part of this Ashtakarya Dira, but. Uh, we may not realize it <laughs> so therefore if we meditate pirapak sumanjari even some 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 small reader this also 
kind of uh, one or one part of kind of this Ashtakarya Lila Smarana. Or maybe one glimpse, maybe. Hmm. So Jagadish Das Babaji did not usually initiate anyone into this kind of bhajan. Hmm. Because Baba taught that only the sadhakas who had risen above bodily consciousness were eligible for it. But this time, Baba found Indirendra a sadaka who was obviously qualified for it. Therefore, he readily initiated Direndra. Direndra used to be absorbed all the time in Lila Smarana. <laughs> Though outwardly he only seemed to be wandering about on the bank of the Yamuna or in the forests. Maybe a little comment. Hmm. Actually, this Ashtakarya Lila Smarana is some qualification. Mind should be pure. Here, Baba mentioned, if we have bodily consciousness or we have material desire, then it is not so much kind of encourage this Lila Smarana or we cannot do sometimes. Because Lada Moha is spiritual and pure thing, if we meditate, should be our mind should be very pure. So therefore, this Jagadisha Das Babaji did not initiate in that kind of smarana. Because disciples need so much qualification to do this. From body Yes, yes. So and then, but but this Direndo's case, he's a very special person. He's very pure. So therefore, he could do this Lila Smarana. And uh, he's like a six Goswami, like, you know, wandering in the forest, wandering in the shore of Jamuna. And uh, he did not care outside the thing, you know, outward. This is a kind of little comment. Sometimes people would say to Jagadish Das Babaji, your Gopal does not do any bhajan. He only wanders around like a lunatic. A crazy person. <laughs> Jagadish Baba replied, what Gopal does is the bhajan of the highest order. He cannot do anything except bhajan. <laughs> <laughs> One evening, when Direndra was sitting, by the side of Jagadish Das Babaji. Baba said, See, see, Gopal, Rama and Krishna returning from the forest with the cows. Oh, how beautiful they look. Direndra said, I do not see anything, Baba. 
Baba paused a little, then patting him on the cheek, said blessingly, you will see go. I have said, you will see. <laughs> so <laughs> he called him go. <laughs> uh, sir, uh, like nickname for Gopal, go. Go? Go, Baba called him go. <laughs> you will see go. <laughs> you will see. <laughs> After some time, Jagatish Das Babaji asked Direndra to study the Shastras and do bhajan under guidance of Pandit Rama Krishna Das Baba. During those days, Pandit Baba lived in Shyama Kuti near Kusum Sarovar. So Direndra began to live in a kuti near Gwala Pokhara at same at some distance from Shyama Kuti. So this is like uh, I think many people know the Ksumu Sarobara. Like, mm. I guess many people know the Ksumu Sarabara. So, Ksumu Sarabara from Ksumu Sarabara to not to, uh, the other side of Radha Kunda. Uh, towards Govardhan town. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, my question is from beginning of this discussion, then Andaka told, now we will read about the guru of the author, Abul Kapoor. Mm -hmm. And now I ask, how he is Guru? Because I heard he is disciple of Bhaktivedanta Saraswati. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Radhan Charamji asking, this, this author Kapo's Guru is Goranga Das Babaji Maharaj because he is a disciple of Bhaktivedanta Saraswati Thakur. Is it true? His question. Yes, because after after Bhakti Shtana Saraswati Thakur and Godaya Mata has kind of start fighting. Mm -hmm. And also after Bhakti Shtana Saraswati left. left. Yeah. And uh, this, this author, Dr. Kapo, it is difficult to find uh, <coughs> someone who guide, guide him properly. And plus, he has a wife. This, this Dr. Kapo had a diksha, diksha, he got a diksha from Bhakti and Saraswati Thakur, but his wife has only Harinam. Mm -hmm. So his wife was completely shocked because she did not get a diksha. Mm -hmm. And also, husband, this Dr. Kapo also, she lost father like uh, she like uh, he fe he felt i'm like orphan mm -hmm. so therefore he was looking for siddha mahatma to take shiksha or his wife getting from some some siddha from you know addiction so therefore this uh, dr kapo and his wife went you know went to brindaban and asking is there any Siddha Mahatma in Brindaban? One old Babaji asking him. Then he's suggesting, don't you know Goranga Das Babaji Maharaj? No. You should meet Goranga Das Babaji Maharaj. As far as I know, he's only Siddha present moment. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this, this Dr. Kapo and his wife went to Goranga Das Babaji Maharaj. Direndra. And then, then first meeting, Dr. Kapo and his wife explain, we lost our Gurudev. We don't know what to do. What shall I do? He's asking Gorangadas Baj Maharaj. 
Then g o r a n g a d a s w a s h Maharaj, amazing, you know. He said, You got to this, this tree. This tree is Kalpa Briksha. Whatever you pray to this tree, all your desire will fulfill. Go pray in front of this tree. This Siddha Mahatma g o r a n g a d a s Babaji Maharaj told them. And then, wife starts saying to g o r a n g a d a s b a j i Maharaj, why should I go to Kalpa Briksha? Because I already find Guru in front of me. I need, I beg just, I want to beg you. Please give me Diksha. <laughs> like this, this kind of story. <laughs> so anyway, so that is the story. And so, and also internet was cutting. So,、uh, I think many devotees know the、uh, Ksumu Sarobara. And near Ksumu Sarobara, little go, go far in the direction of Gobardan town. That is called Shamakuti, that place. And near Shamakuti is Gubara Pokara, one, one, one pond, one lake there. So, it seems Uh, this Pandit Baba, a、uh, Jagadisha Baba, no, no, sorry,、uh, Pandit Ramakrishna Das Baba was, was staying that place. So actually, we went to, I don't know, some devotee, we went to that place with、uh, uh, Kabi. Kabi and、uh, with other devotees. So anyway, so this is near, near、uh, Ksumu Sarobara. Rade, rade.、Hmm. So Direndra began to live there near Gualapokar, some distance from the place Shyamakuti, where Ramakrishna Baba lived. Every afternoon,、uh, Direndra. Would go to Pandit Baba to study Shastras from him. Direndra made intense study, intensive study of Srimad Bhagavatam, Shat Sandarbha, Jiva Goswami, and a number of other Bhakti Shastras. At this time, he also learned by heart all the Vani Granta's books of ver- verses in Vraja Basa, language of Vraja, that were、uh, speaking and describing divine Leela of Radha Krishna. Direndra became famous as a pandit who knows well Shastras in Vraja Sahitya, the literature of Vraj. Pandit Baba. Uh, instructed Direndra to start giving discourses on the Bhakti Shastras in front of Shyam Kuti every evening. Mahatmas used to come even from distant places to listen to Direndra's discourses. Which were learned and very intensely emotional and inspiring. Learned, intensely emotional and inspiring.、Oh. <laughs> rather, rather.
after some time, again, on the instruction of Pandit Baba, Direndra went to his Diksha Guru, Ramdas Babaji. and got himself initiated into Vaishnava sannyasa. He got name Gauranga Das. I, I think, or well, maybe I'm wrong. This Ramadas Baba was Sadhu Maharaj's Grandfather met him, and uh, this is uh, this interesting. This Pandit Baba sent <coughs> his disciple to his Guru Dev to take. Uh, uh, they here mentioned Vaishnava Sanyas. Is this Vesh? Yeah, Baba Jesus. Baba Yeah. <clears throat> As a sannyasi, Goranga Das possessions were a coping, small piece of cloth worn over the private <laughs> Bahirvasa and Karava. What is Bahirvasa and what is Karava? Bahirvasa means the external place. Yeah. Ah, like uh, each other. You know, or, so this copy is like, uh, you know, like uh, underwear. Underwear oh. for, for Baba does, you know, like Babaji wear this kind of, you know, two clothes and, you know, that kind of underwear. Mm -hmm. And the Bahiru Basa is like, a, you know, like, a, what do you say? Long. Yeah, kind of long. Uh -huh. And then maybe, you know, kind of chada. Mm -hmm. And uh, Karaba means kind of some kind of water. A pot. I think water pot. If I'm wrong, please, somebody correct me. I think kind of. Uh -huh. uh, for food, water, and stuff. Oh. Because Baba, you know, usually like uh, sannyas, like uh, they, no, oh, kind, no, no, kind of Babaji, they wear only coping and simple clothes and chada and uh, kind of longi and uh, some kind of, you know, what do you say, some water kind of pot or some kind of mm. uh, water. Yeah. So Goranga Das lived all day and night inside some forest. He was doing his japa and meditation and came out into the village only once in the evening for Madukari. <clears throat> One night, he saw in a dream that from a place near his kuti, an image of Giriraj was calling him and saying, take me to your kuti. I long for your service. Next morning, Goranga Das went to that place. He saw some people had started, started digging a well, water well. After digging only two or three feet, meaning like 60 centimeters, like this being. Two, three feet. 
60 centimeters. A beautiful image of Giriraj appeared. And Goranga Das saw that it was the same image that appeared to him in the dream. Yeah, who knows? Let's see. At once, he lifted the stone, Shila, Shila, and like took it in his arms and brought it to his kuti. He began, he began to serve Giridhari with his body, mind, and soul. But how could the company of the ascetic Morangadas and luxurious Giridhari last long? Gorangadas never begged for anything from anyone except Madukari, something to eat. But there was no end to the demands of Giridhari. Giridhari would ask for silken dress, golden flute, golden crown. Choicest scents, fruits, sweets, what not? <laughs> and Gorangadas had to spell, spend all his time in catering for Giriraj. Catering. Uh, <laughs> Giridari. Yeah, 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 catering. You want? Okay. How you hear it? Yeah, let's see. Maybe it's written. <laughs> so he had hardly any time left for Lila Smarana. <laughs> In this situation, he went to Vrindavan and reported everything to Jagadish, Das Baba, and said, now you tell me whether I should obey you and spend all my time in Ashtakalia Lila Smarana or obey Giridari <laughs> and spend all my time in fulfilling his never-ending demands. <laughs> <laughs> so Jagadish Baba said with folded hands you express to Giridari your inability to serve him and go and leave him on the Govardhan hill <laughs> you should yourself follow the path of abstinence again Gordon. again again ah so Jagadish Baba said to Gorangadas with folded hands you express to Giridari that you are unable to serve him and go and leave him on the Govardhan hill. You yourself 
should follow the past path of abstinence. <coughs> Renunciation. And bhajan shown by Sri Rupa and Sri Sanatana. So Goranga Das did this. Sanatana Goswami followed the path of severe renunciation and self-restraint merely to keep soul and body together he ate bati bowl of wheat flour slightly flattened and baked without even salt and offered the same to his deity Sri Madan Mohan in Boga offering. So one day Madan Mohan said to Sanatana Sanatana it's very difficult for me to swallow your saltiness balls of flour. <laughs> <laughs> My God. At least give me some salt with them. Sanatana said, Prabhu, you are asking for salt today. Tomorrow you may ask for dal, vegetables, sweets, and other things. Where shall I find them? I'm just a Babaji, living barely on a handful of flour obtained in Madhukari. If I begin to collect all those things, when shall I have time for Smaran? If you want better service, you should make arrangement for it yourself. My God. <laughs> Sanatana told to Madan Mohan. <laughs> so Madan Mohan had to make his own arrangements. <laughs> he involved, Madan Mohan involved a businessman named Rama Das Kapoor to build a magnificent temple for him and make all other arrangements for such service as he desired. Sanatana did not live on premises of the new temple even for a day. Wow. He entrusted the seva service of Madan Mohan to a pujari and Sanatana would live separately, devoting all his time to Smarana. <laughs> Jai Guru Dev. <laughs> Radha, Radha. A lower end has sometimes to be sacrificed for the, for the higher purpose. Like lower purpose for higher purpose. Sanatana Goswami and Gorangadas Babaji sacrificed lower service 
of the deity with physical body and materials on the mundane plane to higher service with spiritual body Siddha Deha. Yeah. And materials on the transcendental plane in Smarana. Wow. Radhe. Wow. Uh. This is example what Gurdev told to us some days ago, not long ago, like maybe one week or less even. The difference between Krishna Seva and Radha Seva. He told Krishna seva, for Krishna Seva is enough this body, Sadaka Deha. But for the service of Shimati Radhika, we need Swarupa, spiritual body, divine mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Goranga Das Babaji's Vairagya, which means indifference to the body and its requirements became so intense that he was sometimes completely unconscious of his body. He also could not live at one place for long. He lived mostly in the forests, sometimes under a tree, sometimes under some other tree. In the evening, he went to some nearby village for Madukari. Sometimes, instead of going for Madukari, begging for food, he contented himself, he was happy, by eating leaves or whatever wild fruits he could find in the forests. Sometimes he would even go without food for several days. Sometimes Vrajabhasis would see him lying almost unconscious under a tree for days together. Mm -hmm. Then they would offer some food to him under the tree. But his absorption in Leela was so deep at that time that he would neither feel hunger nor thirst. And food brought by the bridge of buses, they would find untouched. He would also not know whether he has clothes on his body or not. Once, <clears throat> when uh, Gorangadas Babaji was in a half conscious state, 
he went to a village for Madukari. One of the ladies who usually gave him Madukari closed the door of her house as soon as she saw him. Another did the same when he reached her door. Yet another shouted angrily, You mad Babaji! Go away from here! Goranga does Babaji wondered <laughs> why the ladies of Raj who loved him like their son and gave him Madukari with pleasure had suddenly turned hostile to him. Mm. It was only when some street What is this urchins? Began to throw bricks, brick bats on him. I don't know. Someone on the street began to throw brick bats on him that he regained consciousness. And then he realized that we, he was completely naked. <laughs> Ladies were like, <laughs> oh my god it was in this state of Dinion, Divion Mada divine madness that he was blessed with the vision of Krishna amidst the peacocks hmm Once in winter, Gorangadas J was lying under the tree in Padaravan near Barshana, deeply absorbed in Lila Smarana. Cobra came crawling and climbed over his chest. He kept sitting for some time on the chest with head raised and hood expanded. Some Rajabhasis came to the forest to tend the cows and they shouted, Baba! Baba! There is a cobra sitting on your chest. Then Baba opened his eyes. On seeing the cobra, he remembered Anantadev. And he thought, oh, Anantadev had come to bless me. <laughs> <laughs> he folded his hands to pay respects to Anantadev and prayed for his blessings. <laughs> the cobra bent its head as if to bless him and glided away. <laughs> the blessing soon bore fruit. Blessings of Cobra. <laughs> Goranga Das went to Vrindavan for the darshan of Jagadish Das Baba. At night, after massaging his feet, he slept on the ground near Baba's bed. Jagadish Das Baba was perhaps reminded of his assurance to him that he would one day see Krishna Lila. You will see, go. You will see. <laughs> Perhaps Baba thought 
that the time for the fulfillment of the pledge had come. So he lovingly put his foot on the chest of Goranga Das. As soon as he did this, Goranga Das began to feel as if his third eye has opened. As if a floodgate was suddenly opened and the stream of Krishna Lila started flowing freely into his heart. From that moment on, Goranga Das had direct perception. Sakshat, Sakshatakara of Krishna Lila and was swimming freely as it were in the ocean of rasa, transcendental bliss. We have said before that the Mahatmas of Praj liked very much Goranga Das to read and explain to them the holy books relating to the Lila of Radha Krishna, especially Vrindavan Mahimamrita and Radha Rasa Sudhanidi. They always looked eagerly for an opportunity to listen to his path, his classes. But not only the Mahatmas, the Thakurs of Vrindavan also loved to hear his classes. In 1922, Brijabasis of Swamigram insisted that Goranga Dasji gives this course of Vrindavan Mahimamrita for 20 days in a temple of Swamigram. After finishing the class, on the 20th day, he decided to go somewhere else next morning. But the same night, the Thakur of the temple said to the Pujari in a dream, Thakur mm. means Radha Krishna. Mm. They said to the Pujari in a dream, I like Goranga Das Baba's classes very much. <laughs> mm. Ask him on my behalf to continue his discourses for five more days. <laughs> the Pujari told this to Baba. So Baba continued for seven more days for the pleasure of Takurji. Once Baba decided to say Harikata in some village for five days and leave for some other place on the sixth day. <laughs> So on the fifth day, after he had finished the kata, he saw in a dream at night that he had gone out for Madukari in that village. At each door, 
he found Arada and Krishna waiting for him. <laughs> they wait with each other. Ah, they viewed with each other. Ah, they glanced at each other in giving Madhukari to him and said amusingly, Take Baba, take. Take from me. Take from me. So Baba dropped the idea of going away from that village the next day. Because he thought he should stay for some more time in the village in which the twin divinities of his heart viewed he met with them while asking for Madhuhari. In 1924, mm, Pandit Rama Krishna Das Baba uh, left Govardhan and went to Vrindavan and began to live in Dauji Ki Bagichi. Mm -hmm. Dauji, gi, Dauji Ki Bagichi. Now Vrindavan Research Institute is there. I don't know. Bagichi. Something. Now Vrindavan, now Vrindavan Research Institute is situated there. This is time. Uh -huh. Goranga Das Baba also began to live in Vrindavan in a cottage in Shaha Jahampur Ki Bagichi, very near this Dauji Ki Bagichi. While living there, every evening, after returning from begging, he used to read out Radha Rasa Sudanidi to the wish-fulfilling trees around his cottage. Mm. One day, he returned late after Madhukari. Because it had become dark, he went inside his cottage and lie down. Soon after, he heard some knocking at the door. He came out and he heard the voice from the tree. Goranga Das, will you not read Radha Rasa Sudanidi today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Goranga replied, Maharaj, I'm sorry, I returned late from Madukari. It is now dark, and you know, I have no lamp, I have no candles. No, 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 go inside back, go back inside your kuti and see. There is a candle and the matchbox in the corner of your room, said the wish fulfilling tree. <laughs> Goranga Das went inside. He actually found the candle and the matchbox there. Immediately, he lighted the candle and read out Radha Rasa Sudanidi. <laughs> Rad. Okay, we will stop here. Yeah, Radha Mohan are calling. Yeah. Yeah, Radha, Radha, thank you for your attention.